Humanity has explored the depths of our oceans. We've reached the vacuum of space. We dig underground mazes and ride trains in them. And wherever we go… Hey, we need to go. So we tend to need toilets. So um, how does that work when you're in a submarine, or down in the subway, or floating above the Earth in the ISS? <laughs> Aren't you glad you asked? Of course you are. Before we um take a seat, let's head underground in New York City. There are 472 stations in the New York City subway system. 51 of those have restrooms. If one day all those 5 million commuters needed to go to the John at the same time, then you can expect a line of almost 50,000 people at each of those facilities, as for each restroom, men and women's. This will be a long wait. Ah, finally it's your turn. You do your business and flush the toilet. And your bladder is much gladder. What happens next? Well, yeah, you wash your hands, but I mean, where does it all go after you flush? The um, material enters a complex sewer system. Complex because, usually, underground rivers with rainwater flow here, making the soil soft and unstable. Now, unstable soil isn't something you want to hear when you're underground surrounded by concrete, metal, and fast-moving trains. That's why complicated drainage systems are installed in the subway. These systems divert water from the soil, pass it through strong pipes, and it accumulates in special wells. Then the water spills into the city's sewage system. Now, let's take a deep dive into the ocean. Leave your scuba gear, we're going even deeper to a submarine. That's about 900 feet down. Just imagine going to the 99th floor of the Empire State Building, only that far down under the water. Ooh, fun! Let's explore! There are two bathrooms in this sub. One is needed underwater, the second works only when the submarine floats to the surface. By the way, the toilets are called heads here. So let's head to the first head. But be careful! If you don't flush this toilet correctly, say you just flush the stuff into the sea, then it won't be pretty. When you're that far down below the surface, the water pressure is unfathomable. <laughs> you hear about it in pounds per square inch or PSI. At 900 feet below, imagine having 400 pounds of force pushing on every square inch of you from all sides. Down here, you simply can't flush water into the ocean. The high pressure outside the vessel would just come spewing in, and that equals danger, danger, Will Robinson. So, when you flush, you open a valve, and the stuff in the bowl gets washed into a holding tank below, a lot like toilets on airplanes. But here's the difference. Eventually, that tank gets full. Uh-huh. Unlike airplanes that have their holding tanks pump clean when they land after a few hours of flight, subs can be submerged for months at a time. So what do they do when they need more room in the tank? Well, they pump it full of air pressure and send it out into the ocean. But don't worry, they never do that anywhere near the coast where you're splashing around in the water on your beach vacation. Plus, that deep down, the toilet contents wouldn't even make it to the surface. They get crushed to the bottom and serve as fish food. Ew. Hey Nemo, it's lunchtime. On that note, we'll let the fish food sink to the bottom while you and I head back to the surface. We find ourselves on a yacht. Ooh, fancy. If you want to use the head, yep, same name here too, it's a maritime thing, you might need some help. Notice anything strange? There's no flush button. You have to use a special pump. Switch it once, and it brings water into the bowl from the sea. Switch it again, and it flushes the waste into, you got it, a holding tank. Then you need to switch yet again to keep water from entering the tank, which will be emptied at the port. And whatever you do, never throw paper or any garbage into the toilet. This will lead to a severe blockage that you don't want to deal with. Okay, I'm getting a little seasick. Time to head back to land. Oh, look, a Winnebago! Let's see what's going on with its toilet. Everything is much simpler here. These temporary homes on wheels are equipped with dry closets. You do your job, press one button to open the hole, then press another and hold until the water rinses everything into… yep, a holding tank. You just can't leave that stuff wherever you want. When your road trip is over, or the tank is too full, you safely dispose of the contents. 
But what if I'm the happy owner of an RV and I don't want to go anywhere near that stuff? It's okay. There are special companies that deal with emptying dry closets. But we're already at our next stop, a train station. Let's investigate the loo here too. If it's an older train, say 30 years or so, you'd have to wait until it goes a sufficient distance from the city. Only after that are the lavatories opened. You do your business, press the flush button, and everything gets poured right onto the railway tracks. Mm hmm. This is where the phrase, you're on the right track, comes from. No, actually it isn't. Fortunately, we're already moving past this as trains become more modernized with dry closets and holding tanks. These new trains use a vacuum pump to get the contents into the tank, which of course is emptied at the station, not along the way. And that's all the poop on tracks. We've arrived at the terminal station, but hurry, we have a plane to catch. I briefly mentioned airplane toilets when we were checking out the head on that submarine. But what about that loud sound you hear when you flush the toilet on a jet? Get this! Airplanes make smart use of the air pressure difference inside and outside the cabin. Planes are pumped full of air so that you and I can breathe that high up in the sky where the air is thin. So when you flush, the high pressure in the cabin literally pushes your residue down into the holding tank, which has much lower pressure. That noise you hear is the air moving hundreds of miles per hour. We're going higher and higher until we arrive at the International Space Station. Before we investigate their restroom, here's a fun fact. The toilet on this station costs $19 million. No, it's not made of pure gold. That would have been much cheaper. It's because their john is equipped with a very complex waste management system. That is, waste gets turned into drinking water and breathable air here. We go inside. The toilet looks like a space throne. When you sit down, you fasten your seatbelt because, otherwise, zero gravity would have you floating above the seat. Mm. A vacuum is created between you and the toilet so that no bits manage to escape. You do your thing and press the flush button. After that, anything solid or liquid is separated. The solid stuff falls into a container. It'll be sent to Earth with the next spacecraft. The liquid goes to its own compartment. It rotates very quickly, and the centrifuge is heated. The liquid evaporates under pressure and high temperature. Condensation appears in an external chamber. From there, the condensed water enters another tank. All other moisture from the ISS, like the astronaut's sweat and exhaled air, goes into the same tank. From here, water enters a special separator, where the liquid is cleaned of odors and passes through several levels of filtration. After that, the water is heated and sanitized. And voila! We have clean water. In fact, 85% of liquid waste can be processed into pure water. Oh, and from the same water, you can create oxygen. In a process called electrolysis, an electric current is passed through the water and its molecules start to break down. Remember chemistry class back in school? A water molecule is two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, H2O. Those oxygen atoms get collected in cylinders, and astronauts can breathe easy. But where do the remaining hydrogen molecules go? There is such a thing as the Sabatier reaction. For this, the hydrogen remaining from the electrolysis of water is mixed with carbon dioxide, the stuff we produce with each exhale. In the end, you get water. It's an endless, efficient cycle. And now I see why the toilet costs 19 million bucks. Finally, this thought. Why are toilets like really bad banks? Because after you make a deposit, it somehow disappears. Ah, come on, it was funny in third grade. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right, and remember, stay on the bright side of life.